you know, I've said this a hundred times. I mean, if you're lying, it's because you think that what you have to offer is is not good enough, you know? So you get a guy and he's 5'4", and he's lying about 5'6", in his mind, he's like, just 5'4", is just not enough. Mm-hmm. If I was only two more inches, then that would be enough. That would be enough. To, I, I would I would be, I'd be enough for her. And the reality yeah. is, it's not going to make you enough. And it, you really are telling her that you're not worthy in the first place. It's, yo, 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 what's up, Square Pimp Again? On this episode, we have comedian Marcus Monroe. He's here and we discuss uh, value of saying no. Do women actually compromise? Why do people lie in relationships? Why do people lie in general? And how to break up with somebody and the importance of that. We get into the Patreon. We really dig into some really the psyche of maturity that's, and stuff like that too but yeah that's right know. uh if you want to support the show and you want the bonus content you can go over to patreon.com slash manschool202 and sign up there that's where we do all the bonus shows including this week's bonus show where we continue our conversation with marcus monroe and we we get into uh when and uh where and when you should uh walk away from a fight or an interaction uh how to reinvent yourself and uh who to look up to as a role model and it's patreon.com slash manschool202 if you want to support us uh if you want consultations for myself you could uh email me at advice from harry at gmail.com if you want a consultation from dante uh you go to dante nero.com and then click on consult i'm not an alpha male i'm not a beta male either I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, yo, what's up, all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, it's good to be in the building. Harry, how you doing? What's going on? How you feeling? Man, I'm feeling fantastic, trying to live my best life, but still, even in 2023, having a tough time keeping these gators down. I don't, I don't know how hard it was going to be. It's difficult. It's difficult. You think it would get easy with time, but you know the burden is just amazing. Anyway, it never stops. It never <laughs> stops. Uh, we got a special guest. We also got a special show. Now I know I've said that five hundred times before, but this time I mean it. Um, <laughs> the, uh, our guest today is uh, is uh, is just a really good dude. Uh, like this dude a lot. Um, very, very funny dude. Um, give it up for Marcus Monroe, yo. Give it up for Marcus Monroe. Yo, what's up, Dante? How you doing, Harry? It's great yeah. to be back on the Man School podcast. I'm excited. <laughs> it's good to have you, man. It's good to have you. It's always good to have. You. I always, I always get a good feeling when I see you, bro. Uh, same here, man. We, you, we, uh, we, uh, you know, we're like unlikely friends in a way. Like, if you saw us on the street, you wouldn't think Dante you know, and Marcus. You, you know Dante, would be, you'd be like, no, and then you're like, of, of course I do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. But like, you know, like, you don't judge a book, right? But like, yeah. we're, and Harry and I have been friends since what? For like, over God, 10 almost, years, oh, maybe no, 15. Yeah. Really? It's been, a, it's oh, been yeah. a long time, yeah. We met it's in been 2010 or 2009. Yeah, because we were both, I think, did we meet through the Andy Kaufman Award? Thing? was that where we first met i think so. it might have been because I, yeah but it wasn't the year we, it wasn't the year i it was the it wasn't the year i won so it was 2010 i think yeah yeah that's where we met during those andy kaufman awards uh competitions those were the were days fun. man that was fun so that good. was fun and crazy well it was fun for you you won early it took me like five tries yeah <laughs> it yeah, became you... very frustrating by the end until i won because something would always keep happening it, and then you... i don't your your I remember like your um your sets though were always so layered and well crafted, um and you put in you definitely put in the work and, and I think they were just kind of like not letting you win because they wanted to see what you would do next year maybe like because it was it was always so good like Joe Para never won either and he had like there a really, couple people who were really good that didn't win yeah I agree yeah. I, like Joe Maki well, I thought he was really funny um. Yeah, but Killy yeah. Dwyer. Uh, people might not know Killy Dwyer. She does some great yeah. musical comedy. Yeah, there's some good people. But comedy competition. I fucking hate competition, which is why after that one, I never did another one. Even with Last Comic Standing, I think one time my manager at the time asked me to audition for Last Comic Standing. I go, if it's just in front of uh, producers at an empty club, I'm not doing it. I right. go, if it's in front of an audience, I go, oh, okay, fine. And they put me on the with the regular audience or whatever because I was just sometimes you have to say no. Like enough is enough. You get exhausted. Yeah. I had I to just, learn that from Dante. Like, just enough isn't like, 
just know, have some value. Like if you hate doing it, that you know, but you're so young, you want to say yes to everything. Yeah, be, and like I just started kind of saying no to things. I, I used to say yes to everything, every yeah. show, every podcast, every. Like someone reached out to me on Instagram today and was like, hey, can we post some of your videos on our Instagram page? And I clicked on their Instagram page and they had like 17 followers. I was like, why am I, would I give you my content to post on your, like, but I'm like, no, it it kind of waters down the brand a bit. I had to, I, I, I'm now in the mode where I say no, but I still have a little bit of that instinct, especially when it comes to show business of saying yes. And -hmm. there's a couple things I've said yes to that I had to go back. I go, what the fuck am I doing? I think I got an offer recently to... Uh, a couple times, a couple different people ask me on road gigs, and I, you normally I say yes, and you're like, they're like, hey, it'll be like two hundred dollars or whatever, and you go yes, and then when I do the math, I'm like, oh wait a minute, this isn't South Carolina, you know, whatever, six hours south of here. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm gonna make twenty five bucks when this is done. No, I'm not doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But that instinct is like, oh, a half hour, like when I was oh. a young comic, a half hour. No, well, it I feels still, good to say no. I Dante, you might agree, but like stage time is still so valuable in New York city because there are so many comics just fighting. and so competitive to get on up on stage on a good show. So I will put my th- myself through hell to get on stage, to talk for, you know, eight to 15 minutes, whatever. Right. But, but like, yeah, you're, there are some shows where I'm like, why am I doing this? This I'm like, I, where I've done such weird shows, especially when I was, I would did the Edinburgh fringe festival yeah, like, yeah. You have to promote. Did you do that the whole thing. festival? Did you do the whole thing? Whole thing, no days off. I did twenty-seven days. Did you bark? You had to bark and everything. I had to bark. I had to. I, you know, the show was me. It was my one-man show. I got a poster for it right over here on the wall. Mm. But I, uh, it's right there. But nice. I, um, <clears throat> I, uh, that's great for the podcast. Yeah, it was a great but shot. I, also, I, yeah. <laughs> But you're, I would you're, say you need to you, be watch the YouTube feed, but even the YouTube people did not get much of a glimpse of the poster. Oh, but it's well, I'll grab. But yeah, I <laughs> you don't have to. I had to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had to. I had to do everything I could to get people to the show. Yeah, oh. barking for people who don't know is when you get on the street and you have to talk people, strangers, into off the street if they want to see a comedy show, which is fascinating to me that anyone ever does it. Just the notion that one anyone would say yes to it because I would never. I'd be like, I just yeah. get away from me. Yeah. But Let somehow me ask people you about this Edinburgh thing. Did you find it worth it, or would you do it again, or was it just worth it because of the experience? Great question. So the show I did there was a one-man show about my life. Uh, and I would not do that show again. I would go there with a comedy show. The show was funny, and it was considered a comedy show, but there was a script. I had a director. I had even had a writer with me. I had a producer. I had a, I had an assistant. I had the whole thing. And so if I were to do it again, I would just do a microphone and a stage. That's mm-hmm. it. I had I had sets, I had props, I had projection, I had all this stuff. It was a very tech heavy show for the fringe, and I would not recommend doing that. We also had a three o'clock time slot in a two hundred person venue. For me, oh. going to the fringe for year one, that was very ambitious. Right. We did, but I would rather do a smaller venue, sell it out how every many, day. How many, what's the most amount of people you have? What's the least amount of people you perform for? The least amount was probably like seven or eight. And there was like two days that we sold it out. So we had, we went, it it just ran the gamut from like seven people, eight people to 200 people. Mm-hmm. And boy, it is magic when you had 200 people at a friend show, yeah, watching yeah. this kid from New York trying to make sense of his life. Mm-hmm. It, it really all came together. But then when you have eight people in the audience, you're like, why am I doing in this? another country? Why did I fly over the ocean? But then you also the, have to. Why did I go through customs for this? Oh, my God. Well, customs was so such a joke. I should have brought so much weed with me. I didn't bring any. I was starving for the month. But I um, it just helps me sleep. And the, the uh, jet lag sucks. But the fringe, the, the average audience is like three or four three to five people a show because there are so many shows. Yeah. And there's some people don't even get people to their show, paying people to their show. Mm. And we, we papered it for like the first two, like week and a half. We gave out a bunch of free tickets to get the word out and the buzz going. And that did yeah. work. Um, but by it like, did the work four, or it didn't work. Oh, it did work. It worked. Yeah. But by the end of it, we had good press and we had like a PR agency. I mean, there was no money gained at all for this show. The How much did you lose? I didn't lose any, but the producer probably lost like 
twenty grand on the show. Wow. I mean, our housing alone was eight thousand dollars for the month. Wow. wow. And so, like that, and the performance fee, all that stuff. I had a stipend, and I, you know, I didn't, I didn't really make any money. I kind of broke even. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's ex- it's expensive. But I do want to go back to the fringe, maybe next year. Yeah. Um, but getting back to saying no, like. Yeah. Some of those things like, uh, you know, especially when you're younger, I guess there's a weird balance because you don't want to close yourself off yeah. and say no to everything. But then, you know, there comes a point where you got to go. Yeah, I don't want to say yes to everything. And especially when it comes to relationships, saying no is so valuable because yeah. it saves you a lot of grief and you have to learn when to say no. You know, and a big part of that is, I think, in relationships, oftentimes, you know, we've talked about this in the past that. You know, women want you to to do things. They want to do things, but it's weird because it's not enough that you do it. They also want you to pretend that you enjoy it as well. Like, mm-hmm. it's not enough that you do it. You have to like it as well. And I have found that I go, no, I'll do this, but just understand I'm doing this for you. This is not for me. This doesn't count as us time. This is for you. And I'll do it because I care about you, but don't misunderstand because guys get caught up in that. And next thing you know, you're pretending that you love to go pumpkin picking or something. Yeah. You, you have to pretend that you, oh, yeah, I love going to Ikea. Right, no, right. I don't. And it's okay that I don't. Yeah. But why do you have to make me pretend as well? Yeah. So you know, I you also make that distinction. I think what happens, you make the distinction is just like when you talk about saying no to comedy, um, you have to do enough that you start to understand what your value is in order for you to say no, because if you have no idea what your overall value is, you're you're saying yes, because you don't respect your art in the first place. So you you just want it to be seen so that people can, so that people can like it and whatever. And what happens is a lot of times you say yes so much that you, you cheapen, you kind of cheapen your art because if you're just giving it away for free, which is the same thing about your time. Um, I, I more over than not, I, I find that um, people uh, represent certain things incorrectly. Like for instance, I've uh, you know, it's funny. I just did some live. I did a live with uh, the, this podcast before, before we came on. And uh, the one, uh, the woman was like, you know, I'm tired of men saying that they're the prize, and and I was like, well, that that doesn't even really happen. Like, I mean, men, that's no man says that unless you're telling him he's not the prize, or unless you're saying that you're the prize. And what's what's interesting is, is you know, with all this kind of, I'm not going to say toxic masculinity because I don't want somebody to. Hit me, hit me in the face with a tampon, but like there's a situation where you, you we you know there's this thing where everybody's kind of taking a side. You know, I'm a man and this is and I have it this bad, and I'm a woman and I have it this bad, and I and I, I will totally agree with the fact that you know this this, this pushback against you know the the abuse of men needed to happen, but. That doesn't make it also doesn't say that women do everything perfect. You know, like this whole thing where you're like, you should you should you should believe all women. And you and then Amber Heard shits in Johnny Depp's bed and you go, well, maybe maybe we should (laughs) maybe we should take this situationally. But I think we had to get to a point where we we go. Look, it, it's, if we're going to look at people, you want to be looked at as, as a human being. There are shitty women just like there are shitty men. Most of us fall in that middle category where we're kind of shitty and kind of nice and, you know, <clears throat> trying to figure it out. What's interesting is, uh, you know, um, Marcus has a Marcus's wife is older than him. And so she's mature and she also understands what his value is and she appreciates. And so it's weird because you don't have, I don't think you have much of any of those problems, you know? Well, no, I mean, we have our own set of issues, but those are, you know, I, I, I love my time. I spend with my wife. Like I just don't, I, I'm like, yeah, we, we compromise a lot. There's some stuff I want her to come 
with me too. And I know she doesn't want to come, but you know, then, you know, I'll do something with her. So like, you know, and I know she doesn't enjoy a lot of the things that like, I, w- I love to take her to wrestling shows just cause I love, I think it's fun mm-hmm. to like be with my wife and like, I want her to experience what I love about it so much. And like right, the right. production, the athleticism, like the right. soap opera, the story. And, and, you know, and sometimes there, you know, she comes with me and she's like not having fun, but by the end of it, she's like, oh, that was actually, that was actually a good time. I had a good right, time. Right, right, right. Um, she'll figure out that, I mean, it'd be something, I mean, and that's, that's the awesomeness about a relationship that you're in a situation where you can expose each other to things that the other person wouldn't normally do. That's, that's what I love too. And especially being a comedian median i love putting myself in these situations that i typically would not put myself in just to learn other people's experiences and get different perspectives you know it helps me write jokes it helps me be more cultured i can learn a little bit more about things i didn't know anything about my wife's a vegan and mm-hmm. i've learned a lot about like the plant-based culture and the people right. who are vegans and I, I became a vegetarian i don't think i could ever be a vegan i uh, like pizza and, and ice cream too much uh-huh. Um, but just to learn about, you know, these different types of, um, you know, there's all, all these like uh, vegan like subcultures of people and they all hang out together and eat plant-based right. foods and something I'm not, you know, like, you know, but I'll, I'll put my foot in, you know, I'll dabble. Yeah, yeah. I'll dabble in that shit. Yeah, why not? I mean, I, I think any anything in excess is is not great. Whenever I hear that word compromise, though. I mean, Harry, you know, we got to go to the the, the definition the of definition. compromise. So it's Let's interesting see. because you, you, I, a lot of times we'll have men on the on the on the podcast and they'll talk about compromise. Right. Mm-hmm. Sure. And they never know what it is. Uh, OK, uh, so an agreement or settlement of a dispute that is reached by each side making concessions. So yeah. what's interesting is that a lot of times, a lot of times I'll see guys will be talking about compromise and what'll what'll be is you know the the, my woman wants me to do this and i don't want to do it and she goes she's she's like going well i want you to do this and if you don't do it i'm mad at you you know Mm -hmm. and what's interesting is the in the balance of what you said was the first thing you said was i you know like a lot of times i like wrestling and i ask her to go with me and she, you know, she's not really into it, but then she'll say it's a good time. So the, the, the point is compromise means that neither one of you get what all of what you want. <laughs> you, you make concessions for each other. And yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, if, okay. So take for example, there's like, say there's a wrestling event. I want my wife to come with me, you know, she'll be like, I don't want to go to that. And I'll say, They'll have beer. And she'll say, will you buy me a beer? I'm like, I'll buy you two beers. Let's go. <laughs> and she'll say, oh, okay, let's go. You know, like, it, it's little things like that that yeah. just, like, because I did take her to one wrestling event, and there it was, like, at a high school. It was an indie show at a high school gymnasium. Yeah, there was, yeah. like, no alcohol. She was like, what the hell am I doing here? Yeah. Um, so I think, like, it, I think she, and we also, we both like putting ourselves in, in new situations and experiences. And I think couples, both, regardless of if you're into something, can learn about each other and yeah. yourself when you're put yourself in uncomfortable um well, just different not even yeah. uncomfortable no, no, no. just different yeah just different yeah just something you're not exactly sure what's going to happen i think that's if you do the mundane the same thing every day on mondays we eat at this restaurant on tuesdays i make dinner but on wednesdays we go back to our favorite restaurant like I, there's no you know i don't like uh, a plan so much i like to just be spontaneous a little bit of impulsive um that's how i like to live <laughs> my life and and but and my wife is more of a planner but she doesn't mind if we make a plan and then break it right away she's like okay. as long as i know what i'm doing that's fine yeah um it, it's it's important to know that the compromise is not i i do what you want and shut the fuck up and act like i like it and right. that's a compromise the compromise is that we both we both gain from it and if we don't both gain from it then it's not a, a compromise it's, but I think also there's a level of honesty that needs to be in place. And a lot of times I think people are, they don't really have enough self-esteem to be honest. Like they don't mm-hmm. just, you know, for somebody to say, I don't want to do that uh, in those, or I, I went, I remember I went to a piano bar and I mean, I know I look like a piano bar fanatic, yeah. <laughs> right? Yes, you do. But <laughs> I think I saw you there the other day. 
Right. But uh, the funny thing about the piano bar is like when you like what they would have like a Venmo situation where you tip. If you tip, you can you can, you know, you can pick a song. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the other couples would, you know, they would pay like two dollars or three dollars to to. But if you put a bigger tip, you 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 bump their song. Right. Yeah. So every time somebody would do their, every time a couple would do their song and they would get up and dance and I would do a five dollar tip and then <laughs> and then put fight the power. Or <laughs> and so so my whole so all I did was have a ball like people would be doing slow. They do a slow song and they would be playing. Uh, it's just a, a hometown girl in a lonely world. And I would just bam like. No, we're not doing that. Just cut this song. Ruin was, everyone's good time. Oh, I had a, oh, I had such a ball. Nothing just, but a good time. <laughs> and I just kept jacking up everybody's love song. I was, uh, had such a good time. There and they were go. like, and, and you know, it was like, but everybody was like having fun with it. So I think you put yourself in these situations where, you know, a lot of times I, I, I'm, I'm finding also that there's so many people. Uh, and Harry and I talk about this to so the guys who are considered famous or famous adjacent or right at the cusp of being famous comic friends of ours. Um, and they're miserable, mm -hmm. just miserable in their relationships. They're going through the motions. They're, you know, in a relationship, married, whatever, and then miserable in their lives. And so, you know, I, I always... You know, it, it, it's always a situation like, you know, when you don't, you know, like comedy is one of those things. It's funny, like you were saying that there's it's not a meritocracy. It's, there's not a one to one relationship to what you put in and what somebody likes you. You get more spots or you get more work and you or you even if you're funny, if you're if you're if somebody has something against you or you remind them of somebody that they don't like, or I remember back in the days, there was this club called, uh, uh, what was the club on Essex street, Harry laugh lounge, laugh lounge was a club years ago. And the woman there, uh, she booked the show and, uh, and she, you know, and, and no matter how much I killed, she would continually give me a hard time about booking me. And then I, I saw a picture of her ex-boyfriend. He could pass from my twin brother. And I oh, was like, wow. oh, oh, he, boy. oh, she hated my guy. Every time she saw me, she could see that guy. Oh, so that sucks. It's all, you know, it's so much involved that you have no idea, you know, what what's behind it. And then and, and people, a lot of times people are so unaware of their own emotions and they're so uncomfortable with themselves that they don't even, you know, then, then it's, I mean, it was personal, but it wasn't even personal with me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It really didn't have anything to do with me at all. It had to do with something. I mean, I, 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 you know, I was affected by it in the long run, but you know, it's just, I'm, I'm learning more and more that the, the, your honesty, like if I just have people respect what I do on stage, my peers, respecting what I do on stage and I'm able to do it even if it gets no better than it gets now where I can work, make money and, and whatever, which realistically, as you keep doing it, the internet is such that the more you do it, the more people see you, the better you are, the more, more fans. You, I mean, it just never stops growing. Your fan, if you stay consistent, your fan base never stops going. I mean, like yeah. Todd Barry used to Todd Barry, you know, I mean, he had been doing comedy like 35 years. Yeah. This was like 10 years ago. And, and, and Todd is funny, but Todd is not a killer. Like, he's not a guy that levels the room. But everywhere he went, he would sell out, sell out because he had just been doing it. So just so many people saw him and he was so proficient at what he does. He would sell out the room, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's. You well, know, we it's, all it's want a this. question of in any aspect of life, what is it that I can't control? So when you go back to that story, like what is it that I, I can't control that you look you can't control that you look like her ex and that she doesn't like that and won't book you. But what you can control is how good you are at what you do, what, how good your act is. You can't control 
who books you or why they say yes or why they say no or why it's fair. And that's the same thing in relationships or, or dating or business and in life. What are the things I can actually control and fix and what are the things that are out of my control? You, you know, especially yeah. when you run into a dilemma, I saw somewhere they go, well, take, take, take down everything that you can't control and get rid of that and focus on the things that you can control and just do those things. Mm-hmm. It's also, I mean, I could have, I could have hit on her and reconciled like I was an ex-boyfriend and then, then she would have booked me, but she looked like a horse. So I adopted. <laughs> and you <laughs> broke up with that horse, so you had harsh feelings at one time. That yeah, you, I, I am, ex. I'm a little, yeah, I don't like horse face chicks. Um, but it's just, it's interesting. It's um, the dis something. One of the things that I've been dealing with so often is the, the just dealing with the dishonesty of people. Sure. Um, yeah, it, it's the big thing. Is just especially at the beginning of a relationship. I know a lot, like. This is something I've been tackling with like my therapist about and also like talking about it on stage. But I had a problem with like lying when I first met my wife. I was trying like we have a 15 year age gap and I was trying so hard to make her think I was interesting. So I would just like lie about myself, even though I didn't even realize like my life is pretty interesting. Right. Regardless, but yeah, I was but it's, like, it's also your life. And so it's what you're comfortable with. So you don't you like, it, you know. <laughs> yeah, I will say the craziest thing I ever told her was that, and this was just like, I don't like we laugh about it now, but I told her that before I dated her, I dated Amanda Bynes. Oh, okay. From all that? Like that. The... Yeah, there was like no, I just thought it would be, I thought she'd think it was cool. I don't know what and what I was, was her, thinking, what was her response to that? She was like, no, you didn't. I was like, okay. Well, there was like, she, all she <laughs> you had to just do was like, like, okay. <laughs> all she had to do was like Google search like Marcus Monroe, Amanda Bynes, and he, zero search results. So, you know, like later about, she was like, did you really, like, were you together? I was like, nah, sorry. She's like, why would you do that? I was like, I don't know. I just think I thought you didn't think I was cool or interesting. So I needed to like, and like sometimes I would, <clears throat> no, it, it's never my, I would never suggest anyone to lie especially in a relationship you need to build trust from the beginning if you don't have that solid trust base yeah. you're so fucked because nothing you do or say is gonna she's always gonna second guess what you're saying who you're with where you are what you're doing where your money's going um so i would i would and i i cleared it up pretty quickly it was a couple days went by i was like yeah no i'm so sorry like i'm not i'm not alive so i almost um, also feel like you could have shot for higher than amanda mines you know yeah but this was this was 14 years ago this was before the face tattoo this was like I, I like the Amanda you. Bynes lie. I'll tell you, you don't want to shoot too high. You don't want to be like, I, I was uh, I was out with J-Lo. They're like, what? I didn't see any of the tabloids. No, 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 me, J-Lo, we kept it really private. You go Amanda Bynes, if she doesn't show up in the tabloids, uh-huh, you're like, all Trace. right. Yeah, it's a, yeah, you don't want a, a too big a lie. Then you're George Santos, right. you know what I mean? That's right. the problem. Exactly. Oh, George my God, Santos yeah. shot always shot too high. Uh, I, was at, I was at NYU, and I also invented uh, rocket fuel. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of stuff. Yeah. I produce Spider Man. Yeah, you know it's weird because you know people are talking about how how horrific it is about George Santos. I personally know guys who are famous adjacent who lie that much. Mm -hmm. You know who actually lie that much. It's just I I think the exception to the rule is is truthfulness, credibility, and 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 integrity, which is the the rule is usually lies and hyperbole and exaggerations um mm-hmm. the problem is you know i've said this a hundred times i mean if you're lying it's because you think that what you have to offer is is not good enough you know so you get a guy and he's five four and he's lying about five six in his mind he's like just five four is just not enough mm-hmm. if i was only two more inches then that would be enough. That would be enough. To, I, I would. I would be. I'd be enough for her. And the reality yeah. is, it's not going to make you enough. And it, you really are telling her that you're not worthy in the first place. It's like in any situation where there is some kind of social dynamic, and you're just meeting somebody, you're telling them what your worth is. Um. It. It. it I mean, sure, they can make a decision about what your worth is based on material things, 
but it's literally you define what your worth is. Mm -hmm. And so you going, you know, uh, Amanda Bynes is kind of a, it's really a reflection of you not thinking you're good enough, which here's a woman that already, she had already expressed that you were enough. I mean, she was already interested. Y'all were already dating. I don't know. Were you married still or no? Were you married then or was just dating? No, no. We were. This is when we had first met. So we were just starting to date. And so Correct. she, she, and I, you know, I, at the time I was, you know, hanging out with celebrities. You know, I was, I was at parties with like Lindsay Lohan and mm. she was dating Sam Ronson at the time or mm. so like there were, I was like, I wasn't, can, I, but I never met Amanda Bynes. So like there was no, yeah, you were famous adjacent. Yeah. I mean, I had friends who knew famous people and that's kind of like how it's always been there, how I've met other famous people. But yeah, I, but just going back to it, like, I just think a, a lot of guys sometimes lie to make themselves sound more interesting. And I don't know, maybe it's a girl thing too. I don't know, but I've, yeah. You know, I just the cover up is always so much worse. If you were to lie and then double down on it, it just it you're, you're oh well, you end up down. four layers into the lie and oh, then they're that's like bad. Well, what was that like? You know, yeah. yeah, you well, gotta I, bring so that that's why I was like very quickly to dissolve it because I knew like I, there's no way I could like make an Us Weekly article or like fabricate something and like I wouldn't have the time or the need to do that anyway, especially for a girl I just kind of was dating. Um, right. but you know, you see other people like, like, you know, like, you know, George Santos, whoever it is, just like lying then doubling down on it. And then, then flipping it over to you being like, why do you care about this so much? Why does the media care? You know, I'm just like, gaslighting about trying yeah. to make me feel crazy because I don't like the fact that you're lying to me. Dante, it, w was there any lie back in the day that you told like early on? Ooh, that's a good question. Like what, what was the biggest lie that you got caught telling? Because I know you to be fairly, you know, you're significantly truthful, fairly truthful, significantly um, truthful. Let's see. Hmm. Um. Hmm. I had a, I had a, uh, hmm. uh, I had a fight where a guy pulled a knife on me. Mm -hmm. What? And I was. I like that you say a fight where a guy pulled a knife on you. Yeah, as, it, as in singular. <laughs> as in singular. But it, it, I had a fight where a guy pulled a knife on me, and I took the knife for, and I, I told people that I stabbed him after I took the knife from, and I didn't, and I just felt so bad, like I should have stabbed him. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just, <laughs> and that's the guilt yeah. you have. You wake up at night going, I should have stabbed that motherfucker. Yeah. Stabbed that guy. I think, um, Nick, I think Nick Swartzen had a joke where he was like, he's so bad at telling stories, so he just ends every story with, and then I stabbed the guy. We're like, what? <laughs> what? Um, how old were you when you said that, Dante? Yeah. And why do you think you said it? And where did you stab the guy? Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I, well, I didn't, I did take the knife from him, and I did, like, I did knock him out, but I didn't stab him after I knocked him out. But you could and, have. Yeah, but I didn't. And I claimed it. Like, as if me fighting a guy, what's weird is because as me fighting a guy with a knife, and, wasn't and enough. The fight is, just wasn't enough, right? How old was um, this again? Hmm. I was in high school. Um, so in high school, I, um, so th there's a whole story where the friend of mine who, who, like when you go in and certain, like in the nineties in Brooklyn was really rough. I mean, like, I don't know how I made it through when I think back. Right. And a friend of mine was dating the pretty girl on this block and there were a bunch of thugs, uh, what you call 5%. Do you know what 5% is on? I've heard uh, the name of the I don't gang, think I right? know. Wasn't it a gang? So 5% uh, is so it was like a, there were Muslims, Fruit of Islam Muslims, who took some of the lessons from, from Islam and brought it into the streets. And they were teaching it in the streets as a kind of a, a prequel to coming into the fruit of Islam. And then and the guy who did it, this guy named Wallace D. Muhammad, uh basically he died and then and the whole thing existed as a separate 
entity all separate. So there were a lot of rappers like Wu Tang Clan and stuff who kind of affiliated with 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 the five percent of nation, right? And it ended up being a pretty big gang, also. Uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah. So five um, percent is a lot different than the one uh, percent. That Bernie Sanders yeah, was talking totally about. Different. Significant. Totally different. That four percent is a huge say, what's difference. The math- you ever hear some like old school hip hop where they go, "What's the mathematics?" I don't know. You nah, that's heard. a little past my time. I was- All right, so, uh, my boy was fucking in with this chick on the block. She was the pretty girl on the block, and his and and at that time, if you weren't for, from the neighborhood and you dated the pretty girl they all felt like it was their girl. Mm-hmm. Like, you're coming on our block, taking our girl. Um, mm, so it was so territorial. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which which she wasn't going to date none of them anyway. And uh, it was like a summer, a whole summer. So they jumped him and took his took his leather Kango hat. Like, this is oh, how far boy. I'm going back. And then we... Uh, Stole his LA Knights? Yeah, we jumped one of them and beat them up. And then I got a I got pistol whipped on my way to the library, right? No way. And then they jumped this my is a tough neighborhood. You get beat up studying for the LSATs? Yeah. <laughs> well, I worked in the library. I I was a, I worked in the periodical room of the Brooklyn Public Library. So I was going to work and the guy they they saw me, "Oh, you tough." And they put a gun in my head and then they hit me on the back of the head and I kind of and so this was like a thing where we were going back and forth. And they, at the time, we used to ride mini bikes. Well, I didn't ride mini bikes, but they did. So the guy was coming down. If, uh, Harry will tell you, when you come down my block to my house, there's a big hill. And then there's a, you know, a straightaway, like a low level mm-hmm. straightaway. And so you could see the mini bikes coming over the hill. And they would then they would be in a straightaway. And I took a table leg out the garbage and when the guy came I was hit between the cars and I hit the guy in the face knocked him off the back of the bed, and then I ran and so this was like a thing for a whole summer it was back and forth back and forth did they know it was you yeah we, we, they knew we, it was like they would beat us up we would catch them they would beat us up this sounds like on. a low budget sequel to the warriors yeah it was only thing it was no other gang it was just uh, it was two of us and a gang of like nine dudes, right? Um, and I, I remember we got into this because my friend had gotten jumped and they took his Kango hat and his groceries, right? And uh, the guy yelled at my friend and I was like, he was like, yo, they're going to guys, let's, let's go. And I was like, nah, fuck that. Let's you know, just wait. And it was like an abandoned building and then... One guy came out, then another guy, then another guy, then another, and then it was like nine of them, and I was like, "Fuck, right?" And we we didn't want to run because once they chased us, you, you're done. Yeah. So we walked course. quickly. It was like whatever, whatever. We was trying to be cool. We were scared to death. And then we, some of the buildings had doormen, and so we go in the door. His girlfriend's door, and don't let them in. And they would. Mm. But this went on for like a summer where we were just kicking our keep kicking each other's ass, and then I. Cornered one of the guys, he pulled the gun, uh, pulled the knife out of me. I fought the dude, and I ended up knocking him, knocking not out, but down. And he, I took the knife from him. Man, and then I you didn't told you didn't stab like, him. That sounds like pussy shit to me. You just know, didn't even should've. stab. Him. <laughs> I like to hear like self conscious. I can't go back and tell table? Me. Yeah. <laughs> I, what's funny is I've run into that guy at comedy clubs since then, and it was because so what happened? This was. An ongoing back and forth. He we get stomped. I get pistol whipped. I stomp. You know, back and forth. And then it, my mom sent me to New Jersey just for a while to stay with my cousins to cool off and it, cool things and it, off. Yeah, so it cooled. And then when I came back in the neighborhood, I'm in the Chinese restaurant. No, me and my buddy Sean, we're getting ready to go to the Chinese, re- and they're all hanging out. And it's winter time. They're hanging out. In the Chinese restaurant, and he was like, "Yo, they're listening." I was like, "Nah, we gotta go." We went in, and they didn't say anything, and we didn't say anything, and then it just kind of ended, right? But I lied about stabbing the dude. Why did it end? Why did it just end like that? Yeah how how did it end? I it just was like we were we were fucking them up. They were fucking us up, and it was just like it kind of passed its time. 
And then I remember running into the guy, one of the guys, one of the leader guys, and we were like, remember, we were, <laughs> we were laughing about it. It was insane. But it's, I mean, it was, yeah. I, this is what I mean by it really was a, like Brooklyn in the 90s was like insane. Well, it was like 80s, late 80s. It's insane. Like that you would go through that on a day-to-day basis and 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 then go to school and study. And then go to work at the library, and then you'd be waiting for people. They used to come in the library and threaten me, and it was, it was a nightmare. But I, I just realized, you know, I don't know why I lied about it. It's weird because I mean, enough had happened. But I just think you, there's always this thing of where you want to be better. You let, know. Let me, let me ask Harry same question, but what's the worst lie you've ever told to a girl? The worst lie I ever told to a girl. Yeah, maybe you were dating or about to date or. I'm trying to think. Give me a second on that because I tend not, I haven't, I haven't even done, even back in the day, I wasn't even like confident enough to lie if that makes sense. But I'm trying yeah. to think, let me think. Um, I think a couple times I mentioned that I, I had had a threesome when I hadn't had a threesome. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Up to, to just pad my numbers, like to talk about it. Um, and I also meant there was a girl in high school when I was in high school, there was a girl, I was in the friend zone real deep. So I was trying to pretend that I, I realized like, Oh, I gotta make sure that, Oh, she's dating somebody. All right. Then I'm going to pretend that I'm dating somebody. And I did make up a a girlfriend thing back when I was like in high school with this one girl. It didn't work. Uh, I never Mm -hmm. hooked up with her. I never did get out of that friend zone. Uh, Oh, friend zone is the worst. Hate the friend zone. It's terrible. Well, it, Were you in the friend the zone? Way a lot, you get out of this. You, yeah. it, to get out of this friend zone, you have to. You need a reset. You gotta. Have oh yeah, reset. I know how to do it now. Yeah, you reset. You don't. You just. You stop being like friends with her. How to get Peace out of the Corps. friend zone? Yeah. You don't. You go dig well, dig wells in Cambodia, and then you come back, and then she. But what's funny is even when there's that break, you can fuck it up. Still see you as the same person that you left. And then when you say, oh, no, I'm not that guy. And you can't say I'm not that guy. You have to act. You have to not be that guy. Mm -hmm. And then when you change that, oh, you're not willing to tolerate this kind of disrespect. Marcus will get this. Ooh, and now she's now she's attracted to you. You got to come back as a a new character. Like you got to come back as a new character like they do used to do in wrestling. You know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like, hey, man, my name ain't Kama, uh, Papa Shango no more. I'm Kama Mustafa, I'm not, bro. Not, yeah. Dustin, and I'm not here to fuck around. You're not Dustin Rhodes. Yeah. You come back as, you got to come back as Gold Dust. You gotta, I'm you gotta, Gold gotta, Dust. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, you got to do the opposite. If you got to be tough, yeah, you go the other way. You can't be Dustin Rhodes and then you become young Dusty. It's got to be Gold Dust. Gold Dust. That, something completely different. But that that's exactly what I did, like, every new school year. I was like, all right, this is the year I'm going to be... I'm gonna come in. Everyone's gonna to want to be my friend. I'm gonna smart. I'm gonna I'm gonna study. I'm gonna. It's a new year. It's a new me. You know. Then every year, like come February, I know, same guy. You just revert <laughs> to being Marcus. Yeah, but I think like I don't Marcus know. Marcus T Bone Monroe. T Bone. T Bone. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't know why the these gooch. people think the gooch. The gooch. <laughs> I like. I love these nicknames. I got to get a business card or something. I uh, yeah, I don't know why people always feel like okay, I need to be different. I think you just need to be you, right? Like I mean, I don't understand. Well, if you're if you're satisfied with who you are, but if you sure. if you feel like you're lacking in some capacity or there's something well, about that. you, then you have to change that that thing about you. So, you know, yeah. a thing for me back in the day was I was uh I mean, I was afraid of getting into fights because I would just get beat up a lot. Even though I was bigger than kids, I didn't like fighting people. So I would never actually get beat up, but I just hated fights. So I would avoid conflict or whatever. And I found that, you know, working out and doing being more athletic helped me gain some more confidence in that sense. And Oh, I could see that happening yeah. 100%. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't mean um, changing yourself for you. What I was saying was like, I don't see why people need to reinvent themselves so other people like you. Um, to make compromise your own beliefs, so you, people just think you're cool. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I don't think. Yeah, people... but I, I don't know if you if are you really compromising your beliefs when you don't really have beliefs in the first place? Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh no, then, then you you're can. so young that it's it's you're still malleable in the first place. 
Like, oh, super- yeah, no, totally. if you're in high school, yes. But if you're like, you know, I'm a, uh, I'm, you know, even if you're, I'm in my 30s. If you're in your 30s and there you have a friend yeah. group and they lean conservative, but you're a diehard liberal, you're going to be like, you know, I'm more moderate. You know, like no, just now. Do you do you find that that was something you were doing at 30 or no? How old uh, How old are you now? How old are you now? Thir- I'm 37. Okay. But I think when I was. I, no, you know, I'm pretty proud of who I am and what I do. Uh, I don't need to like, I don't know, what's like bend a knee or like I don't. How to, long? Like, how long was that? How long did can you say that you, you you've been comfortable about who you are? Oh, it's it's been a good amount of time, but I think you know probably since I was like in my mid twenties, I kind of figured out like the kind of person that I wanted to really be and work at that because when I was, I met my wife when I was 24 and she was already 39. Like she already had her, she knew who she was. Now I was young. I was on the road all the time. I was single. I was, I was, you know, living the life. Were you putting the numbers up? You got, you had good numbers? No, I didn't have, I was like a, I love the, the chase. What was the body count? Less than ten. Before you got what? By the time you got like married, in, in my in my whole life. What in your whole life was less than ten? I think so. Maybe around ten or twelve. Um, that was before you got married. Well, yeah, I know. I <laughs> I haven't been with anyone. No, I'm since. saying I'm saying ten up until you got married. Yeah, ten or twelve. It's been a while since I've counted. I used to have like a, a tally of the. We girls. all did. We all did. Sure. But I think um, I was always also a relationship guy, and I also never wanted to shit where I ate. So when I was like working on cruise ships, I never wanted to uh, to be in the dark order with hair. I never Sorry wanted about to give Dante a signal. No, no I, I was just playing. I never wanted to like hook up with like someone else who worked on the ship. I never. That was never my thing. I never wanted to have a reputation of being a guy that would, uh, you know, do, I wanted to be like known as being like a funny guy. So that, um, you want to be professional go, too. Your dad was a good, your dad, I mean, cause I remember you, you were saying that you, you and your dad had a good relationship. Oh right? yeah. Very, and we still do. And we're, yeah, but he and was not a, he was like, he's not a guy who had a body count when he was younger. So I would, well, love. here's the thing. Him and my mom were high school sweethearts. They've oh, only wow. been with each other. Wow. And so that that all that's amazing. And they're they're still so in love and it makes me sick. Yeah, to my but that stomach. gives you no dating advice, hel- any helpful thing. dating yeah, advice. That's you the know. thing. I'd be like, He can't so even tell I, you how to deal with a fucking breakup or nothing. You know, well, I don't know. So I'm still I with thought, her. Well, of course. So knowing that, I'm like, oh, every the girl I've been dating in high school is gonna be the girl I date forever. It's going to, that's what I thought. So like my first breakup then was like, we dated for two years. It was so hard for me because I was like, no, this is supposed to be where I meet my wife is in gym class, you know, or whatever. (laughs) You uh, thought you fucked it up, right? You're like, I've already failed out of the gate. I was like, I was like 19 and I'm gonna, I was like, I'm going to be single forever. (laughs) What? You know, but when you're young and you just don't know how everything works, you think that. And especially when you have parents that are like, Oh no, we met in middle school and have been together ever since. You're like, what the hell? Yeah. Um, but, but you know, you learn and, and I'm, I'm so happy that I got dumped a bunch. I always was the one getting dumped. I think I broke up with like two girls my whole life. Uh, because it, you what was that like? Because Marcus, you're so sweet. I want to know what the breakup was like that you when you do have to I do the breaking know. up. I know what it was like. You, you know what it was like. I want to hear, it. Marcus. Uh, uh, tell me, Dante. Ahead. What do you think go it was ahead. like? It's just painful. Ugh. Like, and then just because when you're the nice guy, it it gives them a sense of confidence that they might not have normally because you're begging to get back in like oh. a lot a lot of guys who don't understand that when you're in the breakup somebody says i don't want to be with you the f- what you should do is leave yeah instead of trying to convince them otherwise because that's what i would do i'm like well what if i do this what if i do that and so we like the first serious girlfriend i had we did it for two years and it was um we dated in high school for a little while. Then I moved to New York and we dated for like a couple months while I lived in New York and she lived in somewhere in Wisconsin. She was also going to school. Mm-hmm. And 
And it was so hard. And not only because we were separate, we couldn't like talk face to face. But when we did, when we were broken up, we like broke up on the phone. And it was like a, one of those long breakups. It was like, well, do we want to break up? Maybe we don't. Maybe we take a break. Well, what is the break? Why well, are we going to see other people? Like, what is this? I still love you. What's going on? And uh, then when we finally like talked face to face, I realized, no, I don't want this. She's mm. not the one. She's not it. Really? That was your, your oh, so you you discovered that. But it took it took me to what go through What was the thing that made you go I don't want this? Cuz she I could see it in her eyes that she was like she was done. And so there was n- nothing I could do to say to convince her otherwise even though you shouldn't have to really convince someone to to, to be with you. You should you shouldn't have to hold a gun to someone's head. Um, unless you're fighting with Dante. Um, <laughs> but I think it, it was really, it, 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 even though I knew in my head, I still was kind of fighting a little bit. And maybe I, there was probably, like the, then the next girlfriend I had, who was like the rebound, kind of looked oddly similar to the girl uh-huh. I dated for two years. So it was kind of like, a, and then we broke up. And it was like a, sl- then it was like, okay, I'm over it. I got it. I, you know, I, I needed to be single in New York for a while. I need to needed to figure out who I was without having to check in with my yeah. high school girlfriend back home. You know what I mean? Yeah. I needed that space. I needed to, to to have new experiences. It's just like what we started the, talking about in this podcast. Like it's good to put yourself in situations where you don't know the outcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not gonna know how you go. Let's um, let's shut this down. There's some stuff I want to talk about that the friend zone and the breakup and the, and making that transformation. But let's do it on the Patreon side. Yeah, that's um, right. If you want to join us uh, plug on Patreon, uh, TikTok stuff. Yeah, Marcus, you, please, uh, please. Um, when does this come out? Uh, it's gonna come out t- tonight and tomorrow morning. You're a rare occasion. We're releasing this one immediately. Oh, that's great. Well, on February 14th, I'm at Coastal Creative in St. Pete, Florida. Um, still some tickets available for that, but all my dates are on MarcusMonroe.com. Gonna be in Vermont February 25th at the Woolen Mill Comedy Club. Um, yeah, and in New York almost every night that I'm not on the road. Okay, cool. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate you, Harry. Quick. Uh, if you want to join us and continue with us uh, as we follow, we follow up with more stuff uh, with Marcus. You can join us over at Patreon.com/Manschool202. That's where we're doing all the bonus content for the show, and we're going to keep talking to Marcus. If you want to uh, do relationship advice from me, uh, you can do a consultation. Email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. Uh, that's how you get a hold of me. And also, uh, just follow me on social media on my TikTok, at Harry Turjanian, YouTube. It's all at Harry Turjanian. Uh, I'm doing some new stuff that should be out soon. Um, you want a consultation with me? Look over there at consultationsdantenero.com. Click on consult. Um, all my social media, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, all of those things. I'm putting contact up pretty, content up pretty quickly, pretty frequently. Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being poly. Don't forget the Patreon, www.patreon.com. Click slash manschool202. Yo, love y'all. We out of here.